My favorite Nintendo character is Samus Aran, star of the video game franchise called Metroid. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Seek and Destroy. Today I'll be unboxing my special edition Metroid Dread and give a history of the four main Metroid games leading up to this new installment. My review of Metroid Dread will post soon. If you like this video, give it a like and a comment below with your favorite game in the Metroid series. Now without further delay, let's dive into this amazing sci-fi universe. Touched upon in the games, but explained in more detail in the two manga volumes that released in 2003 and 2004 respectively, Samus was born on planet K2L and raised by her parents, Rodney and Virginia. When Samus was three years old, a group of space pirates, led by the cunning god of death, Ridley, attacked K2L, killing all life on the planet, or so they thought. Three-year-old Samus lived. Before his death, Samus' father sent out a distress signal. That call was answered by the Chozo race from the nearby world known as Zebus, who arrived too late to save the planet, but were there just in time to save and adopt young Samus. Raised as part of the Chozo race on Zebus, Samus's DNA was augmented, and she was given a suit so that she could survive the environment of the Chozo homeworld. And though the Chozo were a mostly peaceful race of bird-like beings, balancing their pursuits in technology and spiritualism, a few clans of theirs were also warriors. Samus, remembering the loss of her family and planet at the hands of Ridley and the Space Pirates, trained herself to be a warrior, growing up to become one of the fiercest bounty hunters in the known universe. In 1986, the first Metroid was released on the Nintendo Entertainment System, introducing players to Samus Aran, Ridley and the Space Pirates, the Chozo, and a new form of life called Metroid. On the planet Zebus, Samus discovered that some scientists of the Chozo race were the ones who created the Metroid. The experiments didn't go as planned, and it seemed the Metroid creations had the ability to bring great destruction to the universe. Ridley and the Space Pirates learn of this new being and wage an attack on Zebus, hoping to steal the Metroid and use it in their nefarious plans for galactic domination. Samus sets out to stop the Space Pirates, refusing to let them destroy any more worlds. With Samus taking down the Space Pirates using her Chozo tech, Ridley teams up with the brutal ruler of Brinstar himself, Kraid, in hopes to stopping the Bounty Hunter. But all attempts to stop Samus fail. Determined, she battles Kraid, Ridley, the Space Pirates, and the one pulling their strings, an evil being known as Mother Brain. Mother Brain was an AI also created by the Chozo. Like the Metroid race, Mother Brain was meant and designed to be used for good. But Mother Brain went rogue during the battles on Zebus and became the new being in charge of the Space Pirates, reducing Ridley to its underling. In the end, Mother Brain is defeated, and Ridley is killed by Samus, bringing closure to her hatred for the creature that took her parents and her homeworld. With her mind focused on the fall of the Space Pirates, the Metroid escape and spread back on the world that Tachozo created them on, a planet known as SR-388. In 1991's Metroid 2 for the original Game Boy, the Galactic Federation, a sovereign government that often employs bounty hunters, deemed the Metroid race too dangerous to exist. The Galactic Federation hires Samus to visit SR-388 and destroy all forms of Metroid life. She accepts the mission, knowing the dangers that the Metroid race possess, but she at heart is not one to commit genocide. During her search on SR-388, Ridley returns in a new cybernetic form along with his space pirates. Samus battles her foes, feeling her rage toward Ridley growing, hating that he somehow survived their last encounter. She uses this rage to push onward and destroy all Metroid life. Just when her rage and hate hit their boiling point, Samus stumbles upon the last Metroid in an unhatched egg. Wanting to kill it, something holds her back. The egg hatches and a small baby Metroid emerges. Samus lowers her weapon. Mistaking Samus for a mother, the Metroid cling to the bounty hunter and followed her back to her gunship. There, Ridley in his new form was waiting. He took the child, preparing to use it to achieve his goals of dominating the universe, but Samus would never allow that. She defeats Ridley once more, rescues the child Metroid, and escapes the area before it explodes. Believing Ridley to be dead for good this time, Samus hands the child Metroid over to the Space Science Academy to study and learn of ways to use the Metroid towards positive goals, which is what the Chozo hoped for when they designed them. 1994 Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo system takes place soon after Metroid 2. Samus receives a distress signal from the Space Science Academy, returning just as Ridley, who is somehow still alive, takes the baby Metroid. Ridley wounds Samus and leaves her for dead, heading back to Zebus with the child. 
Samus survives Ridley's attack and in her weakened state pursues the space pirate, Tezebis. Since the child is the last Metroid, Ridley wants to clone it using Chozo technology on Zebus and create a new army of space pirates made up of the Metroid race. On Zebus, Samus learns that not only is Ridley alive, but so is Kraid and Mother Brain. With the help of the child Metroid, Samus is able to once again defeat her foes and kill Ridley once and for all. A self-destruct sequence is activated, giving Samus and the child very little time to escape. Samus does, but the child does not. When the base that Ridley took over explodes, it takes every last Metroid with it this time. Once again, Samus is the sole survivor. Time has passed as we enter 2002's Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance. Samus is now a bodyguard, working for Biologic's research team, who have built a space station above planet SR-388, home of the former Metroid race. During a research mission down on the surface of SR-388, Samus gets infected by a species that used to prey on the Metroids, known simply as the X-Parasite. The scientists on board of Biologic's space station are quick to act, surgically removing Samus's Chozo-made spacesuit so they could inject her with a potential cure for her infection. The X-Parasite used to feed on the Metroid, but the Metroid also had strands in their DNA that made them immune to the X-Parasite's poisons. The scientists had a few strands of Metroid DNA from the child, extracted back before Ridley stole the baby in the events of Super Metroid. They injected into Samus, curing her, but also giving her Metroid characteristics. Part human, part Chozo, X-Parasite infected, but now Metroid cured, Samus has become a very unique being. Back to full health, she awakens on the space station above SR-388 to learn that her infected spacesuit has been taken over by an X-Parasite and now has taken her shape to become the evil Samus known as SAX. The Metroid race has always had an aversion to cold, which Samus now has due to Metroid DNA being injected into her to combat the X-Parasite infection. Finding a new suit, she armors up and battles the X-Parasites on the Biologic Lab space station above SR-388 with the help of an AI who she believes is the mind of her old CEO, Adam Malkovich. Together they stop the SAX and reverse the gravity of the space station, crashing it into SR-388, killing all remaining X-Parasites, as well as a lab of clone Metroids that rogue members of the Galactic Federation were keeping secret. Once again, Samus survives, this time with her AI, Adam, and behind them, the extinction of the X-Parasites and Metroid lifeforms. But in a universe of advanced alien races, cloning, and gene splicing, the story of Samus Aran is far from over. To be continued in Metroid Dread. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. I'm sure I left out some details. I just certainly cut out stuff from Metroid Prime and Metroid Other M, which I know kind of can fit into this continuity. But since this new game, Metroid Dread, is Metroid 5, I thought I would just focus this on the four Metroid games that preceded it. So there is more story to learn about with Adam and other th characters if you play Other M, so I'll leave that for you to go and check out yourself uh, if you haven't played that game. It's decent, I think a lot of people are kind of conflicted on that game, but it definitely gives you more backstory on the character of Adam and his connection to Samus, um, which was really well done. I thought it was probably the best part of that game. And the Metroid Prime stuff I love in general, a first person Metroid game is just fantastic and I can't wait for Metroid Prime 4 to come out one day on the Switch because that is going to be a blast to play. But next up I will definitely do my review of Metroid Dread. Uh, this game was just a blast to play and I was able to capture a lot of the footage of it. Uh, originally I thought I wasn't going to be able to but luckily they have this great feature on the, the Switch and the Switch Lite uh, which is what I played it on was the Switch Lite and they I could record 30 seconds at a time and do screen grabs and I did a bunch of it. I played through the game twice now and got as much footage as I can so I'll definitely be sharing that footage and my review of the game very very soon so if you enjoyed this video give it a like give it a comment down below i'd love to hear from you and as always we'll continue our conversation down there thanks so much for watching the show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace